In this peaceful spot by the River Brent in West London, St Mary's Perivale has stood for nearly 900 years. Surrounded by its peaceful churchyard, it has survived storms, wars, famines, plagues and even developers. Acquired in 1976 by a charity set up for the purpose, it has now become one of the most important classical music venues in Britain. We're too small for orchestras, but our size and acoustics give us a perfect venue for chamber music and instrumental recitals. During the recent pandemic, we were not allowed to have a live audience, but we have not only survived, but actually thrived by live streaming our concerts. Now, we are thrilled to be able to readmit an audience, but the live streams continue as an essential part of our offering. So, wherever you are, enjoy this concert and please consider donating via our website. Thank you very much indeed.
Good afternoon and welcome back to St. Mary's Perivale on a lovely afternoon here and a good audience here for a piano recital by Olga Pali, P-A-L-I-Y, who's an old friend here, wonderful pianist, charming woman, and we're all very fond of her. And she's originally from the Ukraine, been in Britain for ages and decades, and plays quite wonderfully. You can see her program on the YouTube channel, on the information there, and on our website. There is a slight change, and she will talk about it, but you'll see that there's a lot of ballads and interesting composers. The third piece, which was going to be by Bort Kievich, if I've said it right, is now by Kosenko, K O S. E-N-K-O, it's called Gavotte, and it's quite a short piece, so that's number piece number three. Kosenko's dates are 1896 to 1938, so he's early 20th century. Before that, we have C.P.E. Bach, then the second Chopin ballad, then three preludes by Barvinsky, a ballad by Debussy, and then the... Uh, famous G minor ballad by Chopin. So without more ado, can you please put your hands together to give Olga a warm welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. It's beautiful venue, isn't it? I, every time I come back here, it feels like very kind of home feeling. Uh, thank you, um, Hugh, for inviting me again, and thank you for this wonderful audience. I have some very special people in the audience as well, uh, my family and friends, and um, it is a very important day for me as well to perform some um, interesting pieces, some very famous um, pieces, and some completely new. I'm sure some of them will be totally unknown for many of you, so I will tell a little bit about each piece while playing, but we will start with um, uh, one of the most famous themes ever existed, I would say. So I'm going to start with the variation on the theme of Folia by one of, um, one of 20 Bach's sons, uh, Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. And uh, this piece is so famous, I mean, not piece, but the theme that his variation is um, written on, um, that about 150 other composers used this theme in their compositions, including Scarlatti, Rachmaninoff, C.P.E. Bach as well. So um, you will, even though you might not know the piece itself, but you will definitely feel like, oh, definitely, this is so familiar, I know this. So variation cycle will start with the main theme, and at the end it will come to a conclusion with the same theme as well.
um, so we're moving on to some romantic period now, and uh, I'm going to um, play um, a ballad number two by uh, Chopin. Um, I deliberately chose this piece to be played before number one, which is going to come at the very end, um, because um, for me, uh, it's the piece that really suits the mood that demonstrate, at least at the beginning of the piece, demonstrate calmness and gentle, gentle feelings. And uh, on a contrary, in the same piece, we will hear some totally opposite um, dramatic passages that sort of um, <laughs> compete between each other and abruptly changing each other. And you will sometimes ask yourself, oh, is it still the same piece? Am I, am I, am I missing something out? But yes, this was the, the idea, actually, to meet two different worlds together in one piece by Chopin. So um, the calmness and peaceful feeling will take you somewhere else in the middle of the piece, and, and it will still complete um, by a very um, content and um, peaceful passage at the very end.
Thank you. Um, I would like to um, introduce um, a, a composer from Ukraine originally. Um, I don't think there were many chances you were able to hear them in this venue or other venues in um, United Kingdom. Uh, but he's one of my favorite composers, um, Ukrainian composers. Because he treated um, melody very specially, in a very different way to me. He really treated, um, treated melody um, that we play on a piano as if we're singing it. And um, that, also, always, that always appealed to me uh, quite, um, quite interestingly. So the piece I'm going to play is called Gavot, and it's coming from a large cycle of 11 pieces called 11 etudes in the style of, um, in the form of old dances. So the, the cycle also includes um, all those Baroque dances like Courant and um, Gavot, uh, Zhig, Pasakalia, and all those Baroque dances that we're used to see in, in like, partitas by Bach or French English suites. So um, the piece I'm playing um, would not remind you of a dance as it is, but as I said, Kosenko was quite a master of the melody. And so even such a lively dance as Gavotte will sound more like a ballad to me. <laughs> and I thought it will suit quite nicely in this program as well. So um, as Hugh kindly mentioned, um, Kosenko lived, um, so Kosenko was born um, in the end of 19th century and died in 1938. So he only had a very short life, unfortunately, but he uh, became quite famous during this life of his and um, uh, we have quite a lot of um, musical institutions in Ukraine that are named after him as well and uh, most of his repertoire, most of his compositions are dedicated to piano so we're lucky <laughs> to have so many written by him. So Gavot by Kosenko.
Um, so the next um, composer I would like to play today is uh, another Ukrainian composer, um, Vasil Barvinsky. Um, so his um, piano music, unfortunately, um, are not with us anymore in its full um, amount, I would say, because it happened in his life that he was sentenced to prison for 10 years by the Soviet power, by the Soviets. And um, after he was free again, unfortunately, all of his manuscripts and music was um, burnt, was destroyed. And um, he, so after, after being free again, he um, was still alive for some not long amount of time. And so he tried to recover whatever was destroyed and only did it in part, unfortunately. So um, up to date, we only have about 30 pieces by Barvinsky saved to our days, even though uh, in his younger years, um, so say at the beginning of the 20th century, he was published in uh, quite a few musical centers in Europe, in Vienna, in Poland. So he was quite famous. Um, however, his life wasn't a great success after that, unfortunately. And um, so I would like to play three preludes from a set of preludes that he has um, written. And they are, to me, um, sort of representing different techniques that he used in his composition. So all of them are very contrasting. One is in G major, the other, the other one is in F sharp major, and the last one is in C minor, uh, a very sort of tragic and dramatic key, I would say. So I would like you to um, have an idea of what um, um, a composer, Arvinsky, was and how he um, sort of expressed his emotions, his through through his through his notes through his works basically, so Barvinsky three preludes.
Thank you very much. Uh, so that was the block of Ukrainian music, and we're now moving um, west again, <laughs> I believe. So I would like to um, play another, uh, I would say, rare piece to, to be performed. I, I don't know, how many of you uh, listened uh, to Ballad by Debussy live before? Not many. But it's an amazing piece, and when I discovered it very recently, actually, I'm very sort of em embarrassed to say that, being a classical pianist for many years, I only dis discovered this piece very recently, and I thought um, that it's, it's, in a way, it's a very unusual piece for a ballad, because when we say ballad, we either think of Chopin or Brahms, mostly, and all of them are very dramatic pieces, and very deep, and very thoughtful, and very serious. But this ballad is, is quite different. Uh, well, all pieces that Debussy left are different, obviously. But it's much more lighter, and I would say it's very visual, and everybody can explain different story, <laughs> different storytelling behind this ballad, basically. So I would like to sort of introduce, uh, no, not introduce, but invite you to the world of this colorful and visual world of music um, with a very traditional name, Ballad by Debussy.
So the final piece that is mentioned in the program today is uh, the piece that doesn't really need an introduction and doesn't really need any explanation at all. And I thought the other day, why is Ballad Number no. 1 so famous? And why every child wants to play this ballad? Um, and I realized that it doesn't really matter what nationality you are, what gender you are, how old are you, whether you're a musician or not a musician, this music makes you stop and think and feel. So it really appeals to our emotions rather than, rather than our brain, intellect, thinking, etc. So it's all about how we feel. I remember myself being a child and I remember always having that feeling I would like to play this piece when I'm older, when I grow up and when I become a pianist, I will definitely play this piece. I wasn't allowed to play it when I was a child um, by my teacher and uh, so it, it was something that only big names can do. Uh, you know, now children of nine and eight years old can play ballad number one, but when I was uh, <laughs> at that age, it was something completely forbidden. That was that was really something special, only if you are reaching certain stage and go through all the stages of competitions, studies, etc., etc., you are allowed to touch this piece. And it's not about even technical, um, sort of demanding technical um, background of it, but it's about the feelings. And so that's why every person who hears or ever heard the, the piece of Chopin, Ballad Number no. 1, um, can never forget it. So whenever you hear it again, you say, oh yes, I know this piece. It's that because it, it just makes us all stop and look inside. So that's what I would like to invite everybody to do now. <laughs>
Um, I would like to thank uh, everyone for um, coming today, and special thanks to uh, to my family and people. <laughs> We've got I've got my mum and dad here today, and uh, our friends as well, and my sister. So um, it's a special afternoon for me, and thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Well, it was a gorgeous afternoon. Uh, wonderful music put over wonderfully well by such a charming woman. She, her introductions made the whole thing worthwhile even before she played. And I love all those Ukrainian pieces. Mr. Kosenko, I never established whether it was a woman or a bloke, actually, but I presume it's a Mr. Kosenko. And then Barvinsky, I had never come across that name before, and it was charming music. Beautifully put across, and some lovely Debussy, and then there's Chupin, uh, two Chopin ballads. A terrific recital, uh, and great to have uh, the family here. It's terrific. Lovely afternoon. If you've enjoyed that, you might like to donate something via our PayPal facility. Uh, and on Sunday, we have a fantastic piano trio, the De Beauvoir piano trio playing... Uh, amongst other things, the early Beethoven G major trio, Opus 1, number 2, gorgeous piece, and then two other works, and so it goes on. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your support. Upstairs we've had Rob Jenkins doing the camera work brilliantly, Jill Rowley at the back doing box office, but the main thing is having this wonderful audience here and having you watching from afar Please keep the show on the road. We've got about another 100 concerts booked over the next year uh, with about 65 piano recitals, so you won't get bored. And with that, from West London, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs>